Hello there, hello parlor. As promised, I am about to address a subject on uh, Thomas Jefferson and slavery. Uh, this, I, I wanted to address some facts that I have uh, researched and found out about, in which I will provide all uh, links and uh, um, references um, that might show a different light on to what the left, uh, what the liberal communists actually say about him and other founding fathers like George Washington. Now, the typical attack usually comes in the form that in the Declaration of Independence, you know, uh, Jefferson uh, addressed the fact that all men are created equal. So they see him as a hypocrite and as a, I guess, bad person because he held slaves himself. What the lack, but with the lack of understanding from the left is is quite simple. The lack of understanding from the left is quite shocking, I should say, because everybody held slaves. It was a common practice of the time by almost every single culture on the planet. It wasn't an American thing. Um, and it wasn't even started by the founding fathers. They inherited, Jefferson inherited his slaves, inherited his slaves from his father, inherited his slaves from his father-in-law. From his father and from his father-in-law, he didn't just inherit slaves, he inherited debt, and that's going to play a key role in what I'm about to talk about. Now, Thomas Jefferson's ideas were quite controversial in, in his time. He was, in a way, a radical. Of course he was. He fought the British government. But he basically had a fundamental understanding about human rights, a fundamental understanding that I believe we as a society, and I, I include even us conservatives, conservatives, libertarians, lack. We, we, are, we are missing out on the ideas that made these men great men. We're forgetting them. We're not fighting for the ones that we still remember. And I think that's a problem. So Jefferson um, wrote uh, very ardently against slavery. Uh, he, he repudiated uh, to the king himself, to England, uh, for uh, basically forcing the call, forcing slavery or forcing the practice of slavery onto, onto the colonies. We inherited that practice from the British. Um, not only that, states in the in the well, basically the colonies uh, started enacting laws. They enacted laws. I know Virginia and, and, and Jefferson addresses this. Virginia enacted a law that basically made the importation of slaves and um, illegal. And other states participated in it. And basically, it was a way to drown out slavery. So the first step was like, well, we'll stop importing slaves, right? Then they would concentrate and focus on stump, stamping it out in the colonies. However, this legislation, every time it came up, it was basically a tax. So it was a levy. It was a duty um, that made importation of slaves so expensive that it was basically it was it was basically worthless. It was he, he, there was no incentives for the slavers to bring slaves to the American continent because this tax was so heavy that they would lose money. The king rejected that. He basically vetoed the law and allowed for slavery to continue. So this is the British king telling Americans, or I guess we, uh, the Americans in those days considered themselves British, that they couldn't do that. That slavery had to continue. And, and Jefferson addresses this in, in, in one of his letters, uh, basically saying that, um, you know, uh, there was a political evil, there was a moral evil, uh, and that this forcing basically was something that the British, that the, the king wanted in order to give the, the British slavers. Uh, a leg up, a, a, a profit, uh, not caring about the longevity 
of the United States. And he even says, he says uh, basically uh, that he was disregarding the interests of the American states and, and disregarding the rights of human nature. Um, which he was saying de human nature was deeply wounded by this barbaric practice. Uh, he incorporated this, basically this writing, into his first draft of the Const of the Declaration. Sorry, of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, as we know, the Declaration of Independence was modified. It wasn't. It wasn't taken as is. It actually had corrections, and I believe it had over eighty corrections. And one of the things that it did, it basically took out this this part of of. Uh, Jefferson's argument against the king. He he addresses it like if you just read it, uh, you, you could read it in the comments. But basically, he's saying he, King George the Third, has waged a cruel war against human nature itself, violating its most sacred rights to life and liberty, in the persons of a distant people who never offended him, captivating and carrying them into slavery in another hemisphere, and to incur miserable death in their transportation thereby. So he's calling out the king, right? And this is in the first draft. Obviously, that was taken out uh, because, look, they, they, they had to. You know, they, they were about to face a war against the most powerful nation in the, in the world at those days. And there were just 13 colonies, you know, they had to put the slavery thing in the back burner and deal with the most prominent issue, which was the war. So they needed all 13 colonies to participate, to, to cooperate. Now, he had doubts. Jefferson was not, was not perfect and he had doubts and he would debate these ideas of whether black people or slaves uh, were equal in intelligence to white Europeans or white people. Uh, he declared these uh, doubts in his notes on Virginia number two, uh, volume four. So you guys can go ahead and read it. He had a lot of doubts on whether they were intelligent enough or capable enough to basically defend themselves, protect themselves, and, and do things on their own, but at the level that white people did. So he understood that, yes, there is some intelligence, or for sure some intelligence, but he didn't know if they were as intelligent as white people. You know, I mean, the fact that he had that debate uh, says uh, says a lot uh, in my book. It's he was radical, basically. He also, in a letter to Henry Gregory, basically states that he wishes nothing more than to be wrong about his assumptions. Uh, he declares specifically that all of his observations are limited because they have only been done on his property, on his plantation, and, and very controlled circumstances uh, where uh, the ability and, and, and intelligence of, of the slave would not be allowed to flourish. He, he, he states this so much, uh, as much in, in his letter to uh, Henry. Uh, he also says that... <sighs> He has a very poetic way of saying it um, that I really like. Um, but basically he says that even if they weren't, even if black people or minorities, really non-whites, even if they weren't as smart or at the level of white Europeans, it doesn't matter. It, it's not a reflection on their rights. It, it doesn't change anything. Their rights are, are equal, are identical, period, regardless of how smart they are, right? 
Uh, obviously, he has a very poetic, poetic way of saying it. I, I'll just read the small part that I really like. Uh, he says, uh, because Sir Isaac Newton, and we all know Isaac Newton, but maybe a lot of people don't know that. A lot of smart people, like one of them you can look at is Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, believe that Isaac Newton was the smartest man to ever live. And a lot of people think this. A lot of uh, uh, scientists and thinkers think that Isaac Newton was truly gifted and probably the smartest human being to ever walk the face of the earth. So I continue. He says, uh, and this is Thomas Jefferson in his letter, because Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton was superior to others in understanding. He was not therefore Lord of the person or property of others. On this subject, they are gaining daily in the opinion of nations and hopeful advances are making towards their reestablishment on the equal footing with other colors of the human family. Basically talking about blind people. So he's very clear that intelligence has nothing to do with rights. Rights are yours, regardless of how smart you are. This is very telling about Thomas Jefferson and the fact that a man of that time would think this way should give anybody pause to attempt to taint him as some kind of evil being. On the contrary, it should show that he was a great man, that despite his power, despite his wealth, despite the way he grew up, he believed that slavery was wrong. And people will still say, well, but, you know, Frank, he still, he still owned slaves. And he never freed his slaves, right? He never freed his slaves. He did free six. But why didn't he free the rest? I think he had up to 600 at one point in his lifetime. Why didn't he free them? That's, that's a great question. Well, according to, and this is from the Rice University from Houston, Texas, uh, according to historian John Bowles, and I hope I don't butcher that, um, the reason he was he was given this question, and uh, yeah, Mr. Bowles is a, a um, historian that has focused many years of his career on Jefferson, uh, he basically dictates that, yes, look, he inherited slaves from his father-in-law, from his father, but he also inherited debt. And th this is where I go back to the, the whole debt thing. He wasn't able to get out of his debt his entire life. He died in debt. Additionally to that, in 1792, a law was passed in Virginia that said, if you are a person in debt and you free a slave, your debtors, the person you owe money to, your debtors, could go and seize your former slave. They could basically go out and re-enslave the person you set free. Additionally to that, in 1806, another law was passed in Virginia that said that freed slaves had to leave the state with the state, basically Virginia, within a year. Or the state, the state of Virginia, would re-seize them or re-enslave them. Jefferson did not have the type of money to give his slaves a plot of land in another state, set them up with some kind of education system or some kind of uh, tools so that they can be their own masters and, 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 and start their own life. Now, people might say that that's, that's not... That doesn't matter, that that's still wrong. But I think that he was thinking in the sense that he was worried that they wouldn't be able to take care of themselves. Some people might see that as benevolent, some people might not. I guess that's your choice. I see it as, I try to think of it from his point of view and the man of his times, thinking that, yeah, I mean, they don't know how to read, they don't know how to write. It's going to be hard, so... Additionally, that he, he he wasn't able like if he just released them, his his creditors would come after them. So, what can I say? He didn't. He wasn't able to. Right? Wasn't able to. So, 
there it is, uh, a little bit of knowledge. I'll, again, I'll post the references. Um, Jefferson was a great man. Uh, he wasn't perfect. But this life, there is no black and white in this life. No, pardon the pun. Uh, no no pun intended, but there is no black and white. There's there's shades of gray and, and there's compromises and there's things that you just have to do sometimes. And sometimes you're wrong, sometimes you're right. I think Jefferson was a great man. I think he, his writings show that he despised slavery, but he didn't know any better. That's it. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, more will come forth if you want to post something. Uh, I know, also know a little bit of Aztec. I, I have some documents about the Aztecs and the conquistadors. I have something about George Washington, um, some about John Adams. Um, please let me know if you want me to address a specific um, thing or a specific issue, and I'll I'll go ahead and post some some crazy facts on it. Um, if not, then I'll just choose. I'll I'll think of something and and choose it. So maybe do George Washington next time. I'm not sure. Uh, I really want to get into the Aztec thing because everybody likes to think of uh, Native Americans as. And the Aztecs were Native Americans, but they like to think of them as innocent little butterflies, and that's not even close to the truth. So, anyway, see you guys later. Have a good one.